type of show today. Mm-hmm. We get to focus on one thing for the full hour. And, uh, you know, Sarah Dean was just talking about a kind of fitness where you kind of on the same page as her on her philosophy on kind of her stuff. Yeah, I was. Absolutely. I love it. And I think that it's it can be rare to find trainers that do kind of have that perspective of more like a healthy lifestyle. It's not about burnout. It's not about like the most extreme results in the mm-hmm. quickest amount of time, but over time of what you're doing, what you're eating, how you're moving and like having a pretty balanced approach with it all is important. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of people know it's important, but it's about it's how do you actually do it? Like what does that look like in terms of a daily life? Yeah. And that's the piece where people get confused. Like I want to be balanced about it. Like I know that that's a good thing and that I, you know, extremes are bad, but I don't know how that specifically really works. Absolutely. And two two things she said that resonated with me is, you know, uh, people might start to get healthier, but they don't lose weight. I've been working out and eating a lot more healthy, and I haven't seen. I fit into my clothes better. I don't weigh any different, which is really confusing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then just her whole thing about making it a comfortable environment and something that, that just takes time and becomes a lifestyle because it, it definitely results don't really happen overnight in, unless you're drinking those cayenne pepper shakes that I was talking about. <laughs> Which like is miserable. She said she tried it before. Have you tried no, this No, I okay. would never even try it. I mean, I try a lot of things. That, that just sounds so weird to me. Like, I would never. Oh, I would, like, it. love food too much. And I, like, love eating too much. No, I would I not, not want to do it that way. Well, speaking of food, um, you have what we call Sarah's Food Philosophy. It's kind of your outlook on you know, what to eat, how, when, just your philosophy in food in general. And I I want you to share that with people because I've heard you talk about it before, but the way you've talked about food and what we should and shouldn't be eating has definitely impacted, you know, what I put in my body. So it's something that, you know, I'd love for you to share with our listeners. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So my philosophy on food is just keeping it simple Mm -hmm. and really going back to more so the way that our bodies are supposed to eat and handle food, which is Real food. And to me, real food is good food, is foodie food. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have to be something that's like hippie, weird food that nobody likes to eat. That's like, what's hippie, weird food? What's, well, you know, like people get, um, you know, you don't need to be eating. Like, I'm a big fan of kale, but Mm -hmm. if kale is like too far and that seems like a little bit too much, Mm -hmm. that's okay. You don't have to start there. Or like, I really talk a lot about like, doing like a green smoothie in the Mm -hmm. morning, which would have some spinach in it, maybe some kale and some fruit and some other things. If that is too much for people to like wrap their brains around, you know, if they're eating a lot of processed food, thinking about putting spinach in a smoothie is like maybe not the most appetizing. (laughs) Although I would tell people to try it because you really can't taste it. Yeah. But there's ways to do it that is kind of more of a slow incorporation. Mm -hmm. Um, But keeping your food simple and real and kind of with the... There's only 10 categories of real food out there, out of everything out there. Can you name them? Yes, quiz. I can. Go. Yeah, quiz. <laughs> so there's uh, fruit, there's vegetables, Two. there's nuts and seeds, Three. beans and legumes, Four. there's seafood, Five. there's eggs, Six. there's meat, Seven. there's poultry, Eight. there's dairy, Nine. and grains. Boom! Yeah! <laughs> I'm well practiced at that. <laughs> Good job. Yeah. So that kind of feeds into what is uh, number two on your philosophy list is getting rid of the crap. So anything really that's not mm-hmm. on there, mm-hmm. I guess, would be considered crap. crap. Yes. <laughs> anything that's really been processed, mm-hmm. I would say. And it, so define process because I think some people get confused. They might buy everything that they eat at Whole Foods and mm-hmm. think that they're healthy and it might not be the case. Right. That's so true. So process just means that. Um, it's food that's been changed Mm -hmm. in any way. So um, a lot of times it means it's packaged, but that's not necessarily, I mean, I think it's a little unrealistic to say only eat foods that don't have packaging, that don't Mm -hmm. have labels on them. That's not going to work in the modern day living. So that's that's what I try to encourage people is like, okay, we live in a really busy world. Like everybody's busy. Everybody Mm -hmm. like doesn't have time, let's say to eat healthy, but knowing how much you know, what you're putting in your body and how you're feeding yourself can have these huge downstream effects on everything else in your life, your energy, your mood, your happiness. I mean, everything that if you just put a little bit more attention to that and eating like higher quality, 
better foods, Mm -hmm. then a lot of those other things just happen more naturally. Yeah. Um, So I think getting rid of the clutter and like clearing out that crap stuff just means eating food that even if it does have a label, that the ingredients are very simple. You understand what they all say. Understand what they are, and they're all real food in that sense. At like a. A kindergarten reading level, you could get it. <laughs> Actually, I don't know how good people are. Yeah, reading like in kindergarten, you know, you know somewhere like around elementary <laughs> school, okay. somewhere. Yeah. Does, speaking of you know crap or processed food, um, do things like you know there's we have there's a lot of fat free dairy, uh, other products that are reduced fat. Does that fall into the processed food category? Yeah, it does. Because if you think about like where milk comes from, it comes from a cow. And when it comes out no. of a cow <laughs> or a goat or sheep, but cows are most common, um, when it comes out of the animal, it's whole milk. Yeah. And so anything done from that point of the way that it kind of naturally occurs is a, is a level of processing. Mm-hmm. And so there's been huge impacts, I think, because of that. So I tell all my clients, like, stop doing the nonfat stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, maybe it's a question, too, of, like, overall, you should maybe be eating less of it mm-hmm. because it's taking up the space of times when you could be eating other more nutrient-dense foods, mm-hmm. like vegetables, let's say. Yes. Um, so sticking with the, you know, and people will look at me like, what? Like I try to tell that to people serious? all the time, and I try to explain to them, like, you shouldn't have, like, 1% milk. You should have whole milk if you have it. And they're like, why? And I was like, yeah. you should ask my friend Sarah. Right. <laughs> I, can't, I can't really explain you it, should but follow I her know blog. it's <laughs> You should look it up. And um, soy is bad. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so I think the the main issue and the main reason that why I started my business in the first place was that there is all, the only place we really learn about food is through marketing or mm-hmm. through a certain diet. That's and so there's, true. There's no place that we just learn where it's just about food. Right. And so unless you grow up in a family where people do cook and they're in your familiar with like different types of foods mm-hmm. and how and the basics about food, which is not the case for most people and not the case for most people in our generation. Yeah. Um, so I think that's a big that's a big piece of it is like just knowing some of the basics. It's an education. And once yeah. you know, then it's a lot easier to make decisions and you're not always working like upstream, like so hard, putting so much effort into trying to be healthier, eat healthier, lose weight, like feel better. It doesn't have to be so hard. Well, and that's that's actually, you know, a good point because it, it is unfortunate how complicated it has become for yes. people to figure out what they should be eating right. because no one's going to really tell you. You're right. not going to walk into a grocery store and it's going to be like, well, you should, I mean, you're bombarded with the things that are the most unhealthy first. Right. You know, you kind of have to go to the outside mm-hmm. of the stores totally. and, fig- and get the good stuff. Um, three, Number three on your food philosophy is relax and enjoy good food. To yes. Elaborate on that. I yes. Mean, I think I that's like that. so, I think it's so important. I think that the, you know, it sounds, I hate using the phrase like a good relationship to food because it just, that sounds weird to me too, but it's, it's true. It's how you think about food. It's your mentality around it. It's like if you're enjoying really good food, then you're not, you don't have that kind of crazy talk going on in your head mm-hmm. of like, oh, I really want this, but I know it's not good for me, so I'll eat this. And you feel like it's punishment, mm-hmm. but kind of embracing good food and being able to prepare it in ways that are very easy to do. Um, but they kind of embrace like the true flavors. So things like learning how to roast vegetables so that it actually caramelizes the sugars mm-hmm. and makes them taste sweeter. Or um, I will tell clients like put a little bit of like real Parmesan cheese on a whole pan of vegetables and that's going to make you want to eat the entire tray. Then do it like you so have good. to respect your vegetables. You have to respect like good food and make it taste as good. It can taste just as good as some of the like more crappy food, mm-hmm. but you need to like French fries. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you I roasted mean... sweet potatoes. Yeah, right? <laughs> and that and that too is like if you you have to have the mentality of like not feeling guilty yeah. about food. That it is, it's just a choice that you're making, and you get to make it every single day. One mm-hmm. thing people feel guilty about is dessert. Sometimes, do you mm-hmm. do you give people recommendations on how to enjoy dessert without feeling bad about it yeah, later on? I do. So sugar is one of those crazy things that you the more you have the more you're going to want mm-hmm. and they I mean it really can coat your taste buds it really like makes you crave it every single day mm-hmm. so if you're having it knowing that that's going to happen maybe the next day that you will probably crave it at the same time of day even 
um, can kind of help you override it. But mm-hmm. I think that, you know, to have it when you want to and more so when it's a special occasion, less so if it's a treat. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of people are like into like, I deserve this. Like <laughs> I, you know, like I earned this. This is like such a treat. But think about, I mean, the real treat sometimes is not having to rely on sugar yeah. and not having those ups and downs through your day. Um, the best way to do it is to pick something that you love. Mm-hmm. Obviously, everybody Dark has chocolate different things. With sea salt. Yeah, some people are <laughs> chocolate people. Some people are ice cream people. Some people are baked goods. Some people are candy. Like whatever it is, there's mm-hmm. always a real food version. Mm-hmm. Maybe not the candy. There's stuff. There's candy without like toxic chemicals and preservatives in it. There's good you chocolate. Know. Yeah, it's there's expensive. great chocolate. There's great ice <laughs> but, cream. There's great baked mm-hmm. goods. Like as long as the ingredients that go into it are real, then yeah. there's nothing to feel guilty about. Absolutely. And uh, point four before we go to break of Sarah Adler's food philosophy. Food is 95% of the game you've said. What does that mean? Yeah, it means that um, you really, I think it just impacts the body so much, what you eat. I mean, it literally is... You're building your cells out of what you are fueling your body Mm -hmm. with. And if you can eat food that your body can digest and process in a very easy way that doesn't take a lot of energy, a lot of time, a lot of effort for Mm -hmm. your body to figure out what the heck to do with the food that you're eating, Mm -hmm. which is if you eat real food, your body can figure it out very fast. It's a very low energetic demanding process. So you have energy to do all the other things you want to do in your day. If you're eating more processed um, food and packaged food and chemical, you know, f- lots of chemicals. Lunchables. And exactly. <laughs> Lean cuisine. Hot pockets. Exactly. Yes. Um, then you really are putting a huge burden on your body to try and figure out what to do with it. And that's where it becomes really hard to lose weight and to feel better. Um, you need to kind of have just better quality materials going in across the board Mm -hmm. Um, and most people just with that one change like it can really impact a lot.